Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk about one of the blades, the full disk encryption blade. Uh, it's a fairly easy setup, uh, but it depends on which route you want to go in regards to the type of login. So did you want to go with something with preboot? So what we call preboot is our, our uh, initial uh, little partition, if you will, mini OS is what I like to refer, refer to. Before the OS loads, we ask for authentication. And that, that authentication can be individual or it could be actually synchronized with your Windows password. Um, and then it lets you pass the preboot screen. This is great for organizations that are concerned about brute force attacks, um, accessing the drive, uh, using the NIC to do anything in regards to, again, uh, trying to compromise the password in any form or fashion. Nothing is loaded except for the keyboard works and the mouse works, if you will, from that standpoint, from a peripheral perspective uh, or an integration perspective. Um, outside of that, the person would have to sit there and type out the passwords um, to try to go ahead and access the device. Then we have what's called uh, bypass preboot, or the old version was Windows integrated login, where we pass you through that initial preboot screen for you and then take you to control alt delete um, the hard drive is still 100 percent encrypted it's still protected you just don't have that extra layer of preboot a lot of organizations like this because of the fact that it doesn't require huge amounts of user training it also doesn't interfere with other things like a patching cycle because the nick is not active in the preboot cycle or in the preboot uh, environment um, they're not going to be able to communicate with that device. They're not going to be able to remote into it. They're not going to be able to push any software to it and things of that nature. So organizations like the aspect of that Windows integrated login, but it also, but there's also additional security features you can add, and we'll talk about those as we go through it. As you can see here on your screen, there's some very, there are very small amounts of configuration that we need to do, basically four steps. Okay, and then you can use the wizarding aspect of it to build your own individual policy for whatever devices you are targeting. Um, and you are targeting a device with, uh, of course, from the hard drive perspective. Right? And there's the full disk encryption. We are encrypting the entire drive. This is not filed in folders. So anything that is copied, put, dropped, uh, moved over onto this hard drive or any hard drive on the device is going to be in an encrypted state. So there's no need to worry about putting it into a specific folder or anything of that nature. So the first choice is encrypt all local hard drives. And then we you can do, do not encrypt only uh, do the minimal to require to do preboot actions. Um, you can also go into the editing option here and come in and either create a new one if you want to for yourselves for an organization like marketing finance, and they could have different policies and it's easy to choose which um, policy you want to apply based on what you're targeting to do. You can choose which algorithm you want to do. Our default is AES-256. And then you can do encrypted volumes, all visible disks, boot partitions, encrypted hidden volumes, no encryption, uh, only the pre-boot access, or you can do some custom volume configurations if you want to as well, and come in here and add your own selected drives, volume states, pre-boot encrypted. But typically, most people are encrypting all drives. Uh, allow encryption of volumes detected after the initial installation. So if you decide to slave in another drive, this is a great way to go ahead and um, just automatically encrypt that drive once we detect that it's on there versus having to, in the old way, um, decrypt and then re-encrypt so we can discover the new drives. Now it's all continuous in that nature kind of scenario. Um, and then you have other protections for encryption on IRT devices and then allow self-encrypting drives. So obviously if it's self-encrypting, we're not going to encrypt the drive. Um, in any form or fashion, we're just going to manage the device in the system for you, but we won't be responsible for the encryption piece of it. Okay? So very simple setups in regards to which types of devices you're doing. And then this is the authentication to preboot. So if you wanted to authenticate users to preboot, you leave the default. If you want us to bypass the preboot, then you can go ahead and um, indicate that in this particular setting, you, and you would not see that preboot screen. Um, and again, same options when you come in here, you can create a new policy and or use some of the existing ones here if you're just kind of tinkering around. Uh, if you're going to do the integrated with operating system OS lo uh, login, this is that bypass preboot. Um, you get, you know, you get some options here, require preboot if one or more of the conditions are met, more than one failed login, hard drive is not an original computer. Um, so that way if someone tries to slave it, um, 
it will go ahead and go into a potential pre-boot environment as it boots up versus anything else. Now, if the drive is actually slaved into another machine, the drive is still not readable, so the protection is there. Um, and if the computer cannot reach any of these locations, and these are what we call uh, locational awareness. Let it ping out some devices that you know to be safe on your network, and if it's able to get a response from any one of them, it knows it's in a safe area, and then that way the uh, integrated Windows integrated login will continue. If it doesn't reach any of those for whatever reason, then it's going to go, wait a minute, I don't know where I'm at. Let me go ahead and uh, go into pre boot kind of scenario. Okay. And if you're using any TPM chips, we can do them integrity checks on that as well. And then in here, these are the devices that I mentioned that would be uh, enabled on the pre boot environment USBs, if you want to enable them, PCI, MCI, mouse, uh, low graphics, typically for laptops or tablets. That may need it, number of logon fails, uh, verification of um, successful logons displayed, crashes, enable TPM two-factor authentication, firmware update friendly TPM measures, and of course, if you want to do remote help uh, on pre-boot, we can do that as well. And you can change the severity of the number of digits you require for authentication. So a lot of options that are available in the pre-boot side of the house, or as I mentioned, simply turn off pre-boot. Uh, if you are using Preboot, we have what's called automatic authorization uh, account acquisition. So this allows the system, before we actually kick into Preboot, we need to collect at least one account. So we know that one account can go ahead and log into the Preboot environment. But you can come in here and dictate multiple accounts, especially if it's a shared device. You want to try to capture as many of those logins as possible. Otherwise, if John doesn't log in and kicks into Preboot because John was a sixth person that was on the device, but you only set for five, John's not going to be able to log in until you set John as someone that can access the pre-boot environment. Right? So you can, you've got various options here, number of users or number of days or continue acquisition and then stop after uh, a, um, an additional X number of users. So a lot of options. Um, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people like to bypass the pre-boot and kind of go directly into Windows Integrated. It, it, whether the person has ever logged into the system or not, they can actually access the device if they can authenticate to it. Okay. And then one check, which is uh, basically our, our, our little um, login screen. Again, if you're going to bypass the pre-boot, then you can go ahead and say, I want to use the native OS login, which is your normal control alt delete. Um, you can enable security one check login screen savers. You can set your own screen savers, lock after an automatic. A lot of these settings are done through your normal GPO policies for screen savers and account lockouts. Uh, so it gives you some options that you want to leverage if you're going to do, but if you're just going to use a native OS, then you don't need to worry about it, any of those. So very, very simple, easy settings. Um, once we get further into it, we'll actually push this out to a machine and you can actually see both what the preboot and what the non preboot side looks like. So it just gives you an idea. But this is really just discussing the full disk encryption uh, settings that are available to you. Okay. So the next session, we'll talk about media encryption and get you a little bit more familiar with that. Um, and then we'll go from there. So talk to you guys later. Bye.